welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. So as you can see, the cucumber plants have really, uh, you know, the, you know, they sort of really died back now. So what I'm going to be doing is um, these these final two. Now, if you feel the cucumbers, you can see these have gone a little bit pale. Um, these have gone over now, really, and uh, I think we had, I think we had a little touch of frost. So uh, what I'm going to do is just pull, pull these um, cucumbers off. This one doesn't want to come off though. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is giving these to the worms. I just want to show you the wormery because uh, you've not seen that for a few weeks. What I want to do is give. Um, Give a couple of these to the uh, the worms. Because I'll probably give these to these two to the worms, and then I've got another. Um, I've got another couple which I'm going to give to the chickens, but uh, these uh, these aren't really much good for us to eat now. So uh, I'll just take these into the uh, the wormery now, so you can see how that's getting on. Okay, so here's the wormery. As you can see, um, there's all these little sort of baby worms. They're absolutely everywhere. Um, there's loads of you know they are doing really well. The worms. You know there are a lot of adult worms in there. But as you can see, all the baby worms are up here at the moment. I don't know if you can see, they're all around the edge. reason for that is, um, basically, I haven't, um, I haven't drained this off. Um, I actually noticed last night, um, I put a load of, um, sort of carrot peelings and courgettes and stuff in there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, sort of last week. And uh, basically, because these have got a very high fluid content, obviously, as they've broken down, they've increased the fluid levels inside. So it's always worthwhile just, just making a note. I need to uh, drain off. So I'm just going to uh, open the valve here to to uh, let out the um, let out the. It doesn't want to turn. Now I'm doing this. There you go. So that's obviously that's all the all the fluid from the uh, the worm. You can see that's really good um, sort of um, fertilizer for next year for the greenhouse. So what I'll do is I'll store that um, over the winter. I'll probably um, fill that bottle. Um, with it today obviously you need to leave some fluid in there but the point I wanted to make was obviously um, you need to make sure that um, you know you haven't got too much fluid in there this time of year you know when you're putting in things like um, cucumber and courgette and stuff like that all the other waste product off um, the garden you know you want to make sure that basically you've not got too much fluid in there and as you can see this has got a little bit wet I don't know if you can see the sort of wet patches down there and that's why all these why all these little baby worms are up here Basically, they're uh, they're all um, basically trying to escape the uh, trying to escape the water. Basically, so what I'm going to do is just put these um, put these cucumbers in, and uh, these will uh, again have a reasonably high um, sort of fluid content. Um, now these will rot down really quickly, and the worms will absolutely love these. Um, but um, obviously, what you need to do is make sure that your that your wormeries are kept reasonably well drained. Um, and all of these, all these little worms, all, all then sort of go back down. But you can see there's absolutely hundreds of them. They're all, they're all round, all round the edge at the minute. And I'm, I'm guessing they're doing that to try and escape the, uh, the fluid. Uh, but as you can see, that's the uh, first bottle filled. Hang on. Okay, so that's the second bottle draining. As you can see, that's, uh, that's just merely filling there. As you can see through. Um, so what we're going to do is drain off. Um, well, I'm just going to leave that drain until it's basically filled up. Obviously, what I want to do is um, make sure that um, you know there's no chance of it getting um, sort of too full of water, and that will drain. I'll leave that draining for another, um, possibly about another half an hour. I'll just leave that running there. So that's basically what you end up with, um, and it's absolutely gold dust. That is, um, that's ideal for uh, watering straight onto any plant really. But um, I would say it's ideal for um, putting in your greenhouse and stuff like that because that's basically full of full of all sorts of nutrients. Um, and obviously the, the earth that you get out of here at the end as well um, is sort of well worthwhile as well. But um, So the other thing I'm going to suggest you do as well is um, now I've put quite a reasonable amount of sort of vegetable matter in there. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit and all I've just got is this. This is just a bit of um, ground out of the, ground out of the allotment. 
and um, it's important to note that uh, worms actually do need a bit of sort of earth in there as well um, you know to help with their digestion and stuff like that so I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of earth in there um, and what that will do is it'll help the worms get you know sort of get in there and um, do their do their thing so uh, now I only put that in every so often obviously when I first um, when I first set up the wormery um, I did put a load of um, of earth in there, but uh, all of these, all of these worms on the side here, will now go back down there and uh, um, get, you know, sort of get back into the earth. But uh, that's the uh, the wormery, so I'll basically keep that covered now. I've got to obviously keep it as as warm as I possibly can do, um, and I will be moving it back into the main shed um, to uh, basically to um, keep it as warm as I possibly can do over the winter. But obviously, um, that's what the wormery looks like at the moment. Okay, just another quick note. We seem to be doing weekly notes on the bean. Uh, now, um, basically, I've had loads of them shooting, and that's basically been because um, they've been wet because of all this rain we've been having. And uh, see, so there, there's some that have shooted, like I showed you last week. Um, but um, what I've done is I've brought them up the garden, so it's actually cool. I've got them in the house drying, and um, they were uh, they were doing all right. But I was getting a reasonable amount that have got these little shoots on so what I've done is I've just brought them up to the shed so they've uh, so they're dry um, but they're also uh, a bit cooler up here I think it was a little bit hot for them in the house obviously you know to make them germinate they need to be hot and wet um, and I think they've got both of those things so I brought them up here so they're not warm and hopefully it's, it'll be cold enough to stop them from trying to uh, germinate but I am losing a reasonable amount um, to uh, them sort of shooting so what I'm trying to do is dry them as best I can um, up here and um, um, so they'll uh, so they won't shoot so hopefully they're not going to dry as quick but uh, at least up here they're not all going to shoot like uh, like all of these have. Okay so I want to do some of the questions that have come over from the last um, couple of weeks. I haven't got the ones that will come over this week, sorry, I'll, I'll um, do those next week, but I uh, just want to go over the ones that came over the week before because I didn't get a chance to do them. Um, the first one comes from um, Tony over in the UK Here We Grow, and he was talking about the, the holes in the net in the, um, um, in the, uh, the tunnels. Now, what I did when I got the, uh, the debris net, the, uh, the way that the, uh, the net comes together, you've got like, a, like sort of holes going down there, which is like the black bit. Um, it's all green, and then you've got this, like, this black strip, which is basically when you're putting it on scaffolding, which is what it's used for. Um, Basically, you put the cable ties through there to tie it to the um, the, uh, the scaffold. You know what I did when I sewed mine together. Um, I basically sewed between um, the, the two pieces, leaving those holes in there. And what Tony's um, picked up on, as he said, is you can get the butterflies, uh, the the uh, the red, uh, sorry, the white cabbage white butterflies, going through um, those holes if you're not too careful. So, well, do when I get five minutes, I'll go down and sew those up. But he is right. Um, you do get um, the occasional butterfly going through there, and I think that's where potentially I've had the um, the caterpillars um, on the uh, the brassicas this year. So, thank you, Tony, for your tip. The next one comes from uh, Marina Wilson, and um, she was talking about um, asparagus plants, and she's um, she said she's just prepared her bed, and um, she's gone out and purchased some uh, um, asparagus plants, and uh, she said she's going to put those in in the next week or so. And uh, this this is a good time of the year to do, you know, obviously when the plants are dormant. So if they overwinter, all right. The thing that you need to note with um, asparagus is they like a bit of water, but they don't like to sit in it. So uh, what it what it's worthwhile doing is digging a uh, digging a trench out and putting in um, some gravel or some sharp sand just to make sure that the drainage is okay. And then what I would what I would suggest you do is mound it up slightly so that they're not actually sitting in water. Um, now, when I first started to grow asparagus, I did um, I did initially buy, um, I think it was about six plants, and I, I planted them in exactly the same position um, as they are now. Um, unfortunately, they all kind of failed, um, or most of them failed, because of the uh, basically the ground wasn't um, sort of dry enough for them, if you like. I think they sort of rotted off. So um, I I kind of dug a load of gravel in. Um, now they do like a bit of moisture, but what they don't like is to be sitting in it. So um, what I would suggest you do is when you plant them, 
what you need to do is sort of dig in some gravel and, and, and stuff so that the, the ground will drain and then um, build the build the soil up into like a um, uh, sort of like a triangle shape like that and then you plant them on top of the triangle with the roots going down and then just cover them over with dirt and then you'll find that they'll, that they'll, that they'll grow really well. Um, asparagus is um, one of the type of plants uh, and, and I've had a couple of comments to say that um, asparagus will last up to um, you know sort of 20 years and that is right but um, the comment that I made with the asparagus is um, I have had some f um, fail in the past so it is worthwhile um, sowing some seeds and, and, and growing the plants on in pots so if you do have any fail you can just bob them in and um, you know sort of grow them on for um, you know to sort of replace the plants that potentially may die but it is right if you were uh, if you look after asparagus it will last you know they are basically in a, um, a perennial plant so they will um, grow on year after year um, the next one comes from Mike Walker and um, he he um, he was one that um, said about the asparagus plants, um, you know, obviously being perennial, but he also said about uh, what cucumber varieties you use. Now, these um, cucumbers, when I bought them, I always buy the plants. I don't buy the, um, I don't buy seed and grow them. I have grown them from seed in the past, and I've had mixed results. And uh, because the because the seeds for cucumbers are reasonably expensive, you know, you can pay kind of three pounds for a packet. Uh, what I've found is it's 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 actually cheaper, or it works out about the same, just to buy the plants, and uh, they are. Um, they are a bit difficult to get going um, because they are um, plants that easily kind of damp off and um, so I, I personally find it better just to buy the plants and then you know just sort of plant them. Now when I bought these plants the um, basically the label said um, female F1 that's all it said on the label but uh, they have been really good plants and I have actually had um, I think there's um, 51 Two, three, four, five. I think I've had 55, 56 cucumbers in total. So really, out of half a dozen plants, I think I've done really well. That's averaging probably about nine, nine cucumbers per plant. So uh, I think I've done well there this year. Um, next uh, comment comes from um, Brian Hubbry, and he was, um, and he was saying that he buys his seed uh, over the internet, and he goes to a company called MoreVeg.com, and on there they've got various um, seeds and stuff. Um, that you can buy, so that's um, you know that's worthwhile on a look if um, if you get five minutes. Have a look on more veg m o r e v e g dot com, and um, they'll um, they've got plenty of um, vegetable seed, so I'll uh, I'll most certainly be having a look on there. Um, next one comes from Dazzo um, from um, Slasher, and he was saying about um, coffee grounds. When can I use them? Coffees coffees are really good um, sort of use coffee grounds basically you get it from Starbucks or you know sort of coffee shops like that and uh, they do bag it up for you uh, what I do is I, uh, I've, I've got one reasonably local to me and if I give them a ring they will put it on one side and basically I get a bin bag full of it um, and it is uh, it is really good stuff for the garden it is very rich in uh, nitrogen if you look at the MPK the nitrogen is really rich it has got potassium and um, phosphate in and stuff like that but it is really rich in nitrogen so what you want to be doing with coffee is pouring it on your leafy vegetables things like uh, your brassicas um, you know like your um, and sort of lettuce and things like that things that you eat the leaves with um, and uh, it is also good for um, putting on uh, your compost as well because when you when you compost stuff um, what you normally find is if a, if, if a compost tip stalls, i.e. It, it stops rotting down, the bacteria and uh, microbes and everything else that are in the, uh, the compost need nitrogen to, to, to basically fuel themselves, to multiply and whatever else and do their good job with the compost. And um, when you're, the one really good thing that you can use ni um, coffee grounds for is to supplement the nitrogen in your um, in your compost. Now if you're mixing everything up in your compost, which is always the best thing to do, if you're digging in plenty of grass cuttings and uh, leafy um, you know, greens and stuff like that, th there should be enough nitrogen in there anyway. But there's no harm in putting some coffee in there as well and that coffee will help to break stuff up and, uh, and it, it'll, it'll help the um, you know, all the bacteria and microbes and stuff in there to, to multiply and sort of do their thing with the uh, the compost. So what I use um, coffee grounds for is uh, basically anything that, that, that you want the greens for off and, uh, and also um, 
to put on the uh, the compost and that and that helps it all break down and stuff so that's basically where you can use coffee the time of year to put it on really I would suggest you put it on the ground in spring um, if you put it on the ground now it's likely to wash away um, so I would I would suggest you put it on the ground probably um, so sort of two three four weeks before you uh, plant your beds out uh, you know when you're digging them out so when you're going to dig the ground and, and get it all prepared for next year, what I suggest you do is put the coffee on then, dig it all in, and then, uh, you know, sort of three or four weeks before you uh, plant up, and then you can put your plants in, then you know that the, you, you know that the ground's enriched um, um, for your, you, you know, for next season. Uh, the next comment comes from um, <coughs> Muddy Boots, and he was talking about uh, a lady on his allotments, and uh, she's just bought um, a load of... Um, Tools for the garden, sort of spade, fork, hoe, um, rake, all those stuff. You know, all the all the basics. Uh, they can be a little bit expensive, and I just wanted to say that it's a really good comment that um, Nigel put on, and um, it's it's well worthwhile you spending a little bit more money um, and getting yourself some good quality tools. Now, if you are starting out and you've got to buy everything, you've got to buy buy a fork, a spade, a shovel, a, a hoe, a rake, and all the rest of it. Then you know, obviously. You know, you know, depends on your budget. You might just want to get yourself something to last you for a few years. But um, in all honesty, um, some of the spades that you get, they are a bit. Um, I always, I always tend to go for kind of stainless steel tools. Uh, the reason being is they, they, they tend to sort of go into the ground a bit better. The uh, the, the the normal sort of wrought iron sort of steel type, uh, normal steel that goes rusty type forks, um, they tend to um, um, not be as good. Um, I I do tend to break forks to be honest with you. It's always when I'm digging the potatoes up or when I'm digging the ground over um, for the first time in a while. Um, I tend to possibly dig too much out, and uh, uh, you know when I go and I tend to break the um, the forks. I have broken quite a few to be honest with you. But um, the one bit of advice I will give you is some of the companies now um, give like a lifetime guarantee or a ten year guarantee on the on the forks and spades and stuff like that. Those are the ones to go for because those are the ones that you know that have got you know a high level of um, confidence in their in their product. And um, I would I would tend to go for that. I wouldn't really spend any more than sort of twenty five thirty pounds on a spade or a fork because that's really any more than that. And I think you're possibly paying for the name, but um, you know. You should be able to buy, you know, if you shop around, you should be able to buy, you know, really good, you know, a really good fork and spade for 50 quid. And that should last you indefinitely, you know, if you look after them. Uh, rakes and forks and stuff, you don't need to worry about too much uh, because, it's, you know, it's hard to break those types of tools. Um, so, you know, you can go for cheaper makes on, on uh, those, but uh, most certainly your fork and your spade, um, that's where it's worth spending your money. But um, as I say, you know, it... it it is an investment and it is something that you're going to use for a number of years and um, you know I think it is worthwhile you spending the money and also as well um, get a get a fork or a spade that suits you um, you know if you are um, I mean I can use pretty much any fork or spade uh, because you, you, you know I've got a reasonable size but um, if you are a little bit smaller um, you know it may well be worth you getting a smaller fork or a smaller um, spade obviously you do get ladies um, forks and spades and that, but you do get different sizes, and um, you know it's, it's it's well worth you buying one that suits you. Um, obviously, you're the one who's going to be using it. But um, shop around; there are some um, um, some really good deals out there that you'll get. But um, buy the buy the better quality ones um, if, if you want my advice, because uh, you know it is something that's going to last you for a while. Um, the next um, um, uh, the last comment comes from uh, Margaret Hunt, and she was saying about the um, strawberries. And I'm not sure if I was very clear or not, but basically the strawberry bed um, has got a bit of weed in it now. I've got a bit of bind weed in there and I've got a bit of um, other sort of annual weeds. And um, the comment I was making is what I'm going to do is dig the bed out. And uh, I haven't got around to it yet. It was something I was planning to do in the next few weeks, but we've had that much rain over the last few days. The ground is just absolutely sodden. I just can't go on the ground at the moment. Um, but um, what I'm going to do is basically dig the dig the, um, the strawberry bed over, dig the plants out 
uh, put them on the side and then dig the ground over, get some get some muck in there and some good compost in there and re revitalise the ground basically. And then I'm going to put the, the strawberry plants back in. Now last time I did it I got some um, fleece and I cut holes in the fleece and planted the, um, the strawberries through the fleece. This time I'm going to do it differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the strawberry plants straight back into the ground. Um, any that are looking a bit woody and a bit older I'm going to discard those. I have got some new spares that I um, grew last year that have been in the pots on the side and what I'll do is I'll put them in between where there's so many holes um, and what I'm going to do is just basically clear out um, clear out the bed, dig it all, and you should be doing this kind of every three, three, four years um, sort of dig it out, you know, give the ground a good aerating, you know, you, you know sort of get the um, fork in there and give it a good turning over um, and then get some organic material in there, some compost, some, um, some chicken muck and, uh, and then I'll plant the, um, the strawberry plants back in there. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to bring them inside. There's no reason to bring strawberry plants inside. Uh, you know, they can stay outside for the winter. But now the plants have started to die down and they're now dormant. As you know, I showed you a few weeks ago, uh, there was a few flowers and sort of strawberries. And I can actually see a few strawberries from where I'm here. Um, I don't think they're going to come too much with this weather, to be honest with you. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut them off, cut the plants back, um, dig them out, uh, put some stuff in, put them all back in, and then what I'm going to do is rather than putting um, membrane down, what I'm going to do is just put some wood chip down around them, and this will obviously, um, one, it'll mulch the uh, the ground, it'll stop the weed from growing, and it'll also, um, it'll also um, uh, be a deterrent for slugs and stuff like that, so that's basically what I'm going to do for next year. So just do a really quick tour as you can see. The, uh, the cucumber plants have um, started to die back, as I said. The, um, the ginger plant seems to be starting to go over, so uh, I'm going to um, crop that. I have given it a little bit of water early on in the week, but what I'll do is I'll, uh, I may well um, get all that out next week and uh, see what sort of crop we've got. Um, sunflowers. Um, looks like we've had a little friend in the greenhouse. Um, seems to be helping himself to the sunflowers, but that's not a problem. Um, looks like we've got a little mouse or something, but... Uh, He's not going to cause any problems for me. Uh, so if he wants to bunk up for the winter, he's more than welcome. So that's the uh, the hollyhocks, the black hollyhocks. They're um, sort of dying back now, which is what I expect. But obviously they'll be back in the spring. Um, the spinach I've kind of give up on, to be honest with you. Uh, lavender and stuff. I'm keeping these reasonably dry at the minute, obviously because of the chance of a frost. Um, I don't want to, um, um, you know, sort of water just in case that freezes and damages the roots. Um, all this is sort of dying back now. Obviously, what I need to do is sort of cut back uh, what is dead, and then uh, there's a buddleia growing in the. Uh, I don't know what it is with buddleias, but the lights are growing paths and things like that. But uh, what I might do is try and get that one out if I can. If not, I'll just chop it off. Um, everything else is doing okay here, obviously, for the time of year. Um, somewhere in there are some carrots. Unfortunately, I've not got around to uh, weeding it, but uh, the um, what I'm going to do is uh, cut back the. Uh, the comfrey. Um, obviously, what I've done is I've let that grow this year to, you know, to build its strength up. Um, I've not cut it back, but what I am going to do is cut that down to the ground now, compost all of that. Um, I'm going to be building a fence along here and sort of putting some mulch along the um, asparagus as well. A few of these raspberries have come out again, so I need to tie them back. These longer ones, um, these ones, what I'm going to do is cut them, cut them down a bit because I think the winds in the winter are going to damage those. So what I'll do is I'll cut them down to kind of about five foot or so. Um, obviously most of the uh, potatoes are out. It looks like I've got a bit of allium um, moth damage on the, the leeks. Um, I didn't have um, a lot of um, faith in these plants when I bought them to be honest with you. But um, those ones there are the ones that I grew from seed. And then I bought these ones from a garden centre. And uh, seemingly the ones I bought from the garden centre are the ones that have got the allium leaf miner in them. But uh, alas, what I'll do is I'll um, pull these out um, in the next few minutes when I finish this video and get rid of them because I think uh, they're not going to come to anything. Plus obviously with allium um, leaf moth what you want to do is get rid of them because obviously the, the worms and that are going to go into the ground in effect next year. However, I will have potatoes again here next year. Um, so uh, right, I need to get these potatoes out. There is a sort of half a row left here. Um, the... the um, this sweet potatoes kind of give up. This one, I'm just going to dig it up and see what there is. Obviously, there is a bit of a sweet potato there. 
but uh, I'm just going to dig that out, I'm not going to bother shifting it. Uh, that's where the potatoes were. Now I've left this ground here undug because what I'm going to be doing is obviously redoing this um, redoing this tunnel so I'm going to leave this bit undug so because I'm going to basically use this bit of ground here to construct the new one. Um, the um, I've had a little bit of um, um, these these aphids are going absolutely mental on the uh, brassicas and uh, I have sprayed it once already but uh, I really do need to come up but uh, there's a reasonable amount of damage on them there. Uh, the broccoli is doing really well, uh, we've eaten most of it now, most of this is eaten um, so that needs to go into the chicken drain now but the, uh, these ones here are still okay so uh, I've done really well with the uh, brassicas this year but these ones seem to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, they don't seem to be like the others, they seem to be uh, growing a little odd, I don't know if you can see that. But uh, they're not they're not like the uh, the usual. Uh, I think it's possibly because of the amount of rain that we've had. Uh, they've got a little bit wet. But uh, anyway, there's plenty more to be out of that. So I've done well with the uh, the broccoli this year. I'm hoping that the frosts are going to kill all these uh, aphids off on here. So all being well, that'll kill them off and sort them out. But uh, yeah, there's not really a lot of points. I've not been able to get up this week at all. It's just been chucking it down every day. Um, so uh, the aphids have uh, liked that. Now the uh, spinach has started to grow a bit now, um, it has started to come up finally, so uh, what I might do is pick a bit of that uh, to have tomorrow. We've, we've eaten quite a few of the Swedes, it's going to be time to start pulling the parsnips up soon so I'm uh, looking forward to that, I do like a parsnip. And the, uh, the beetroot is all but had now, we've had most of that, uh, but uh, there is a few more um, in there yet to be had. Now just look at the difference in the, uh, the rhubarb, that's just happened in the last sort of week or so and uh, you know a little bit of cold weather and um, they've, uh, they've all sort of gone over and died so what I'll be doing again with this is mulching again I always give this a really good mulch as you can see this had a mulch last year of um, sort of bark and, and um, stuff you can see all the worms in there um, but uh, this possibly was a little bit coarse what I'm going to do is um, I think it needs a bit of nitrogen in there to be honest with you so I'm going to be putting some um, grass cuttings and stuff like that down on there to try and um, help that break down. Um, this bit of ground here I've not dug over yet um, because uh, I'm expecting a, um, a load of wood chip to come here so uh, but what I might do is just blow it, just dig it out anyway and uh, look at this daily here, look. unfortunately it's fell off, it's a shame. Yeah, there's another one here. It's the only problem with daily is the beautiful plant but uh, doesn't take much for the uh, bit of rain and the flowers come off. Um, so what I might do is dig this over as soon as the ground dries out um, because it's been absolutely ringy wet. I mean you can see the water on the road there but as I say we've had sort of seven, seven or eight days constant rain and um, I just haven't been able to get up. But uh, the, uh, I've started to take the beans down which is a bit, bit, uh, bit cold now really to do anymore and it's starting to go dark so I thought I'd quickly do the video. But I'll carry on this weekend and get hopefully the rest of those out. I've taken the first kind of eight foot out um, and the corn plants are now finished so they need to come out as well. So what I'll do is I'll just pile all of that up probably on the front here and um, burn it. But that's what the, uh, a really quick look at what the allotment looks like. It's obviously there's not a lot going on at this time of year, obviously in, uh, in November there's not a vast amount to do. But um, what we will be doing is starting to construct the various, um, uh, the other tunnel and all the other bits and bobs before too much longer. So um, it's just kind of tidying up and getting the crops in. Uh, what's left anyway, but uh, that's the ground. What I will be doing is uh, mulching um, all of this with some uh, compost. I'm trying uh, trying to get my hands on some stuff to put on the ground for over winter. Um, obviously I've started to put the chicken muck over there, there's a pile of it forming there, but what I want to do is basically just pile it up there for now because the, the straw is still reasonably fresh. I want that to start to rot down, so that's why I'm piling it up. If I spread it on the ground now it's likely to blow everywhere and uh, um, you know, not rot down particularly well. So what I'm going to do is just pile it up there, and then in the spring I'll spread it about and dig it in there. But uh, yeah, the spelly trees um, starting to sort of go dormant now. They haven't lost any leaves yet, but um, I guess they will do before too much longer. Um, but as you can see, the winds uh, winds pretty pretty good today. It's actually a bit calmer now. I've waited for it to calm down so I could take the video, so you can actually hear what I was saying. But uh, Yep, that's the allotment as it is at the moment. So 
So, I hope this episode of Jim's Love of Garden has been some news to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love of Garden.